Testing, testing. I'm recording it as a podcast as well, and I am known to be a loud little lady, so I can't tell if the mic should be this close to me or not. Hello, my rats, and welcome to Ratitude Check. Are you ready for your ratitude to have a check? Because I am. Um, this is obviously episode one. I've always wanted to start a podcast, and I have tried it in the past, but the thing with a podcast, I was trying it with a co-host, but then the, the scheduling, like, that gets really hard. Um, and I thought doing it alone was always going to be so scary, but my friend Lavinia does it, and she smashes it. I wanted to give you guys the full rundown on my wedding, and uh, there's no way I could do that even in a 10-minute TikTok, because we all know how much I talk. Um, it is a problem. And so if you're listening in the car, I think that's that's nice and easy, but I know some people like YouTube and like visuals, which I'm happy to provide. Let's just dive into it. There was apartment wedding, but there was also actual wedding. Okay, I'm stalling because I don't actually know how to start this. Let's just start. And if it turns into a second episode, great. And if it doesn't, great. I was concise for the first time in my life. Uh, there's the mental health of it all. And then there's just the simple facts of the wedding. Let's just do simple facts of the wedding. This is episode one. <laughs> Let's not get too heavy right off the bat. I won't include apartment wedding, but she will be referenced because she's very important to me and she was awesome. She was actually incredible. It was like the best day of my life. That was the best night of my life. Wow, the audio is looking like I'm really loud. Been stalling for three minutes, so that's great. I don't know why it's so hard for me to talk about my wedding. I don't know why. I'm sure it will come to me because if I've learned anything about this process is when you're confronted with a big journey, and this wedding was a big journey for me, it became a mirror into the mental health journey I needed to go on. And that just like kept uncovering itself, kept uncovering itself. Like I, being engaged was one of the hardest years of my life. And everyone says it's supposed to be one of the happiest. It was not. I never want to go back there. I'm so glad I'm on this side of the wedding. The wedding nearly killed me. I'm going to include the rehearsal dinner here because we need to talk about my rehearsal dinner because that night nearly took me out. That night is when everything ratty in me combusted. So basically... I didn't really know this was going to happen. I wasn't looking forward to it. I knew I wasn't looking forward to it. Um, not the dinner part. The dinner part is nice. So I want to separate that. I think the dinner is a lovely idea. I think getting your friends together and your family from the two different sides. It's the opposite of Romeo and Juliet. Like everyone's coming together. Life is good. Everyone loves each other. They're happy these people are getting married. That was awesome. That was so cute. Unfortunately, before, <laughs> before we get to go to dinner, we went to the space. And most people do this in North America, but my my bridesmaid Hannah is from Scotland. And she's like, I'm so excited to go to this because we don't have these in Scotland. And I was like, maybe that's a good thing because these are, these are something else. So we go and I get there and the boys had arrived separately. So like Zach's there because he came straight from work and the door's locked. And I'm looking at him like, why didn't you, why didn't you go get the key? You waited for me to go get the key? Strike one. No, I, I'm not like that, but I, I was shocked. I was like, sir, you know, you know, deep down any small stressor is gonna hit me like a ton of bricks. So where were you? Um, it wasn't even a big deal. And I, like, it, it's so funny. It was just like, it started off and it was like awkward because they weren't in the room yet. And I was like, okay. And I'm immediately panicked. Like, are we not gonna be able to get in the room? You know, my brain starts spinning as a rat brain does, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get the key. And Zach was like chatting with everyone. He was just hanging out with his friends. It was, it was genuinely fine. And it was 5.01 and it was starting at like five. So like, we were good. But anyways, I go get this key and I get everyone in there. Um, it was really hot in there, which was good. So I guess like, this is why rehearsals are good. We figured out how warm that room gets when all the doors are closed. So we were able to send a note to the building and be like, can we open the window actually like an hour before our ceremony? And we did do that so that nobody like roasted during our ceremony. Cause there's nothing worse. Okay. There's nothing worse than roasting. And we wanted to have the fire on during our ceremony, which I'm really glad we did. And we weren't too hot. I did not sweat. I really didn't want to sweat. I hate sweating. Um, I sound very high maintenance when I go through these rat things. But at the end of the day, when you're designing something and you're trying to design your perfect day, why aren't you trying to just hit every marker, right? Like, I don't want to sweat. Perfect. Let's try to hit that. Hit it on the head. Perfect. I didn't stink at all on my wedding night. That was another, like, weird fear I had from, like, 13. Like, what if you your pits st stink and, and you're hugging everybody, right? I didn't. That was awesome. If you want to know my deodorant later, I'm happy to share it. I also had a wedding dress. Okay, now we're getting into deodorant. I could go on forever. Deodorant, though. At my sister's wedding, I used a stick deodorant, and the grease of it destroyed the dress. I had a pit stain the whole night, not from sweat, actually, but from the grease from the deodorant. So please consider that. The dry sprays are much better if you have a satin chiffon kind of moment. Yikes. 
My wedding dress though was really low from my pit and it had this netting to give like a nude illusion. And so I was able to deodorant it up and I used my stick secret extra strong shit up in there. Yes, okay. It was great. Now, rehearsal. I should have told, so this is all the stuff that I learned in hindsight. I should have told Zach to run that, but you know, Zach, the whole process has been very helpful. He was like super helpful. He made a lot of the decisions. It, it was never like dragging him through the process. He is the one that wanted the big white wedding, right? Like the big blah wedding, right? That He was excited for it. So he was very involved, which was great. Um, I was the one that didn't want it, but because I was having it, obviously I wanted to make it as close to my dream as possible which is why apartment wedding happened. But again, another time for her. Zach's mind, he, he's like, well, she knows how she wants this to run. So I'm just gonna let her go for it. And I'll be there as moral support. And he did check in a lot that night. So I got to give him credit for that. He kept asking, are you okay? And I kept saying no. Because <laughs> I wasn't, was not enjoying that part of the evening. I uh, felt like I had to boss everyone around. And I really hate that. I'd rather be a fly on the wall. And I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs. I don't care if you pee your pants walking down this aisle, I'll see you at the end of this aisle. Like in my mind, we're all adults here. You know, you've seen the movies. You got to get to the end of this aisle. I really actually don't care how you get down there because I'm not even going to see it. I'm out in the hallway waiting for my turn. Okay. Um, but you do rehearse this like walking scenario. And so I had to be like, okay, so everyone's going to line up here. And okay. I got some feedback from my family and friends and everyone was like, didn't come across as bridezilla at all. How could I when I'm a rat? But in my mind, I hated telling people what to do. I hated it. It's not even telling people what to do. It's just like, obviously, how would you like this thing to go? They don't know. So like, it's obviously not bossy, but I felt bossy and so I hated it and I was getting like really ramped up. And then a lot of people had a ton of questions and we didn't have a wedding planner. And yes, you can call me cheap, but as I will always say, living within your means is never a bad idea. You could call it cheap, but you could also just call it living within your means. A wedding planner was not in the budget, okay? Um, so, and, and we were able to run these things ourselves and, and the day went off without a hitch. It just is more work. So if you have the cash happy for you, that's great. Wasn't our scenario. Um, you know, we, we had to budget, like we didn't want our wedding to get too away from us because already I found it to be disgustingly expensive, right? So curb, had to curb some of this, this shit. But that would be, you know, ideally in a perfect budget world, you would have one of those because wow, telling your family where to stand, that's a nightmare for me. That's the last thing I want to do on the planet. I did it. I was being super chill. Um, on the outside. On the inside, I was screaming. I wanted out of there. I wanted to run out of there because I was also confronting just like rat hood. Like, wow, you have to do this in two days. And the fear was like bubbling up. And I know you're like, why was this so hard for you? Especially because you want to be an actress. You want to be a comedian. You, you are on stage. I embarrass myself almost every week at a comedy show here in Toronto. Okay. Almost every time. I'm fine with that because I'm like fully in control and the goal is to embarrass myself. The goal is to make you laugh. On my wedding day, that wasn't my goal. The goal was to have some magical day in front of people. Ew, I am private. Ew, I don't want you to see, no, I don't want you to see my emotions. No, but inevitably they will. Um, so that was one thing. Also being oh, like in front, uh, that was, if you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast, I just did like a, breathy sigh like a Disney princess. Um, like when you, when the expectation is for you to be a blushing bride, because apparently that's the expectation, which is so dumb because not, not all of us are blushing brides. Some of us are rap brides. Some of us are, are fun brides. Some of us are cowboy brides. I don't care. We all have different personalities, but the expectation seems to be that you are this like little wilting, gorgeous flower. And if you're like this, that's gorgeous. I love that. And I watch movies about that all the time. I love you too. There is room for all of us. What there isn't room for is assuming that we should all fit in one box because we all have different things going on, right? In our minds, in our bodies, in our, right? Like I have a dead pancreas. Like if I was a blushing bride, I wouldn't have to worry about my dead pancreas. Do you know what I mean? Maybe there are type ones, by the way, that are blushing brides. I'm so happy for you. It just wasn't something I was able to pull off. And so everyone watching me, I felt like I was automatically going to get judged because I already felt like I was at a disadvantage. Like I can't pull this off for you guys. I can't provide for you this image. I just, I knew it and I was freaking out. And then also like, I could feel it on the inside. Like I, again, I'm gushy. I'm romantic. I am an oxymoron. I am everything contracting contradictory everything about that is me but it makes sense in my head so I hope you're following 
But to be that image in front of 100 people wasn't going to happen. I knew I was going to fail somehow. Didn't want to do it. Didn't, didn't feel like me. We're forced in this box. Ugh. Yucky feelings there. Okay. Yucky feelings because this wasn't my dream wedding. I just wanted to elope. I wanted something casual. I wanted something that felt more like me. I think that's what the real thing is here. It just didn't feel like me. Okay. Like I was having trouble. I was even having self-worth issues like with the wedding dress. I don't know if you saw those videos on TikTok, but like finding the wedding dress was kind of, I would cry a lot when I found her and it is the perfect dress. I loved the dress, but I would cry thinking about it because I felt so unworthy of like putting it on. Oh. If I were a Barbie, if if I were a wedding edition Barbie, it would be called Rat Bride Barbie, but it would also be Mental Health Crisis Barbie, okay? That would be the real name. There was just, I don't, I'm learning why. I don't fully understand why. And we will get to the mental health of this all in another episode because like I said, this is a jigsaw puzzle. This is a lot to unpack. We're not gonna do that here. I'm gonna try to stick to the facts even though I keep segueing, but you knew, you knew I, you already knew I was going to do that, okay? Anyways, that was a lot. And so um, I'm in this space, I'm thinking about all these things and my fears, all of the fears, every rap ride fear I had was now in front of me, okay? And I had eyes on me, which I really hated. Any eyes on me as a bride, I really hated. I struggled with. And everyone was so nice. It wasn't them. Okay. It was, it was all in my head. All of this is all this journey in my head. Right. Also my MacBook makes really loud, like air noises. So if you're listening to the podcast and you can hear those weird MacBook noises, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, I don't know what's wrong with my MacBook air. I bought it three years ago and she's always been like a loud cow. So, so rehearsal dinner was really hard. Um, because I didn't have answers to all the questions. Um, we had to run our own music. Uh, so obviously we weren't able to practice that there. So like the walking part was like this weird quietness. Um, and everyone was super cool and chill with it. But you know, like there was a lot of unanswered questions and I just all of a sudden was confronted with the fact that I was going to have to do this big in, in two days. We had it on the Thursday, the wedding was on the Saturday. So I was just like, Ooh, the anxiety was just really bubbling up. It, nothing really bad happened at this thing, but the anxiety was like seeing its end point and was uh, was making me crack. And so when Zach and I got home, um, I had a panic attack. Uh, and I'm not saying that lightly, I had a legitimate panic attack and I have had them before, but they were in university when I was depressed. That's a story for another time. But I do know what they feel like. And so I just like had this uncontrollable sobbing fit and I kept saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I said something else. I wanted to remember the other thing I kept like repeating, but it was essentially, I can't, do this. I can't handle this. Um, I'm about to explode. And it was all this anxiety. It was all that, again, this is going to be the mental health. Uh, there'll be a different episode for the mental health of it all. Okay. Um, but essentially I was, I was just really, really panicking and I had a huge panic that night. Um, I had a huge panic Friday night. Um, it was really like, yeah, when we got that close to the wedding, it was, it was bad news bears for, for me. I wonder if I could like put my laptop somewhere. I think I might be a genius because I just ended up moving the laptop away because I saw visually that the cord was properly long enough to scoot it out of the room. Now I can't, I gotta turn the laptop so I'm not fully a genius. <laughs> I can see my little sound bar and when I have guests on, I'm just gonna explain to them that this is low budget. Okay, more on that later. So the wedding day, um, positives and negatives. Something that was really great was I got my Mamma Mia morning and I don't know how else to describe it because I'm not in Greece and she did way less makeup than me and she probably got her dress at a thrift store, which I did not do. So what do you mean, Taylor? What I mean is like when you watch Mamma Mia and that wedding morning is so wholesome and Mamma Mia in general is just this like wholesome mother-daughter community, women, vibe, family, supportive, casual, easygoing vibe and that's the kind of backyard wedding I wanted is like this whole Mamma Mia vibe so then I thought well at least I could have that on my wedding morning so we went to my parents hotel room which was across the street from my uh apartment which was really fun so me Hannah and Nick went over in the morning they came and got me at the door and it was so cute and we squealed and I oh my god I I said goodbye to Zach and Rosie they were like cuddling and I was like okay like the next time we see you Rosie like mom and dad are gonna be married like wholesomeness the cutest morning. Could I sleep that night? No, not at all. I I slept for four hours and I know that because I have an aura ring. So I slept from about like 11 to like 
2 30 and then got like a little bit and then i got up i just got out of bed at 4 30 a.m because i was like wired for sound like i was like i can't lay here any longer i did get my mama mia morning which was really fun and just like very cute i loved that that was everything i wanted it to be but again it's because there wasn't 100 people watching me if 100 people had to watch me i wouldn't have liked it right it was just like this aspect of the big wedding that i was like that's just not for me it really is not for me i also really like to live in casual and um because that's just where my comfort is you know um, I like fancy things and I like dressing up and I, I like the finer things in life. But, um, if I talk about like where I'm most comfortable, it would be in like casual, like having fun and making jokes and making light of things. That's where I like to exist. Now I love every wedding I've ever gone to. I've loved them all. And I love every vibe that every person like brings forward. That's not me judging like weddings. That's just like, okay, when I thought of my own wedding, I thought I wanted a casual giving Mamma Mia kind of cute vibe. So we're at the hotel room and uh, I did hire someone to do hair. It worked out really well. My sister's sister-in-law, so her husband's sister, is a professional hairdresser. And Alicia agreed to like come up on the train. She was so down. She was like, I'll come to the hair. No problem. And I was like, you're kidding because she is amazing. And I know her super well. And, uh, you know, we obviously did Lauren's wedding together. She did Lauren's hair. She is incredible. She understands the vibes and executes them. Like she is so good. So I paid her. Um, instead of paying a stranger, which really worked out well. And at the end of the day, I'm very glad that I got my hair done. That is not a regret. She did an incredible job. And the way I danced like a feral animal all night and that stuff didn't move. Like my hair did not move, okay? Like it was like a gorgeous Cinderella helmet, okay? She crushed it. So like that was really awesome. But it was really great because she like added to the Mamma Mia vibes because I knew her like it wasn't a stranger. I trusted her. I didn't even have to worry. Like when I sat down to do my hair finally, I was like, whatever she does, I'm fine with. I knew that about myself too. I don't know if you guys saw that TikTok, but I knew like I had to figure out all these things before the wedding day because I knew that like on the wedding day, I was just gonna be like, whatever. Like I was, if anything started to stress me out, I was just gonna like cut it out because that's what I do. That's like a rat thing I do. And I think that's healthy. Like I'm just like... If, you, if, if it's not working we cut it like and it's okay and I don't have like an attachment to it I just like sever it I sever it like a head okay um so like if I had been doing my own hair and it didn't work out I probably would have thrown it up into a bun and I would have been fine with that but it obviously isn't ideal because obviously I wanted my hair down right and I don't mean like throw it up in a bun because I'm too cool for school I mean I would have tried very hard to throw it up into a nice bun if wearing it down didn't work okay I'm not you know um I gave my girls their presence at the hotel it was so cute i gave my parents their present my parents gave me a gift of like my mom drew this picture of rosie it was so cute she brought her garter that she wore at her wedding that lauren wore at hers um it was the nicest morning we did a champagne toast adorable um you know like it was great it was great it was like such a great morning and the vibes were wonderful and it was so cute i could have just lived there forever um Diabetes was an asshole, but I was ready for it. So basically I left two sites on my body. If you're an endocrinologist, ignore this. I don't know if that's an okay thing to do, but obviously I was prepared for diabetes to come for me because she's been a big pillar in my ratitude um, and rat ratitude because I will always have ratitude. We'll talk about that later. Um, but anyways, so I had two sides of my body, luckily. And so when the one wasn't working, I plugged into the other. So I did go up to a 16 and I didn't understand why I was so high because I only bit like a little bit of a muffin. Um, luckily switched over to the other site it started coming down the only thing that was scary was that site was like almost falling off because that was the old site so then we had to text zach to pack another one of my sites to bring to the venue in case that one ripped out so diabetes did try to come for me also the night before i had to change my dexcom and for some reason it might have been the spray tan or how hydrated i had kept myself after the spray tan like um cream wise i do the site change and it like literally fell off my leg which was so annoying but i got another one on and then i taped it up and sometimes you have to just do that and so it wasn't perfect because I wanted to take pictures of my Dexcom but she was like taped up which I got, I got some I got some it's just she has tape on her so whatever I didn't let it like ruin my day because I was ready for it and I really think that that's a really great thing to prepare for so like I that's like one thing I think is good about being a rat is like I analyze everything and I overthink everything and like sometimes that is hell yes sometimes though it does save you because you are prepared you are more prepared than you need to be but you are prepared and I do recommend that just for big days like this at least. I wish I could relax at other times, but I can't, but I'm working on it. Getting the hair done, hair was pretty much on time. Everyone was being so lovely. I got my hair done, Alicia did a gorgeous job. Um, at the end of the day, I barely looked at it in the mirror. Um, that's something I noticed my sister did as well on her wedding day. It's like, it's kinda, 
you just go into a bubble, you just go into a zone. And there's no room to like overanalyze on those things because you could drive yourself crazy, right? I'm really excited for the photos back. I know the hair was perfect. She did these perfect curls because she just got it. I was like, I kind of want like beachy curls mixed with elegant curls. And she hit the nail on the head because I was like, I didn't fully want beachy because my dress wasn't beachy and the venue wasn't beachy. But I didn't want fully elegant because that just doesn't feel like me. So she really, she really nailed it. That was a slay. So I'm really glad I hired someone. That worked out really well. Now the makeup really glad I did my own makeup that went super well but only because I practiced so darn much so I really had this like goal in mind something I know about makeup is it's muscle memory like if you start getting something right and you do it enough your body like remembers it and so what I did was I just bubbled again and that my that's my friend's a Nick's word she 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 said like how do we help you through this because I was really freaked out the two days before obviously and uh, she was like, I think we just need to make bubbles for you. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly perfect because I love to sever things like heads, right? I told you that. So bubble makes that same kind of idea. It's just like, boop, not even gonna think about you. So when it came time to do my makeup, I bubbled. I actually like went into the corner of the hotel room. I sat on the floor. I know that sounds like the most quirky Zoe Dejanelle shit you've ever heard, um, but it was naturally done because I was just like, I need space in this like little hotel. And the floor was comforting. It felt really grounding, really normal, really casual. Like this isn't a big deal. Like if I had sat in front of like a ring light or like a mirror magnet, like, you know, not a good idea. I don't know that I'd recommend it. It worked for me, but I used like a tiny mirror out of a makeup palette. It actually like is terrifying to think about that I did do that, but I wanted to be away from everyone at that point. Just made my little bubble. And so that was my way of doing it because the mirrors were being used for hair and dresses and blah, right? So I was like, I'll go in this corner. And I just quietly began and people would float over and kind of chat with me and it was so nice. My sister floated over, she checked to make sure my eyeliner was even and Nick was sitting with me for a bit. Like, it was great, it was great. But they knew she's bubbling and they gave me that space to bubble and I really enjoyed doing my makeup. I can't even remember the process. I really think angels took over my hands, my guardian angels took over these hands because it turned out perfect. The best I've ever done it. Perfect. And uh, I can't wait to show you guys that tutorial. I'm really happy with how it turned out and you can do it. You just have to practice a lot. But the one complaint I will say, and again, I haven't seen the photos, probably won't matter at all. I, the, the eye look I think I did was neutral and I was trying to aim for more of a warm neutral and I don't think I hit warm I think I remained in neutral which was fine and again I didn't have time to really overthink that I'm just like really glad the makeup turned out well and had it not I probably would have just washed my face and done it again you know because that did matter to me but it went really well um acne wise that was a huge anxiety leading up to my wedding and I did everything in my power and we could do, we can do an episode talking about acne, absolutely. Um, or like, you know, things like that. I was doing face masks. I was doing the skincare of your dreams. I went and got a hydrofacial. I went and got this other like laser that helps with redness. That thing was awesome. I think it's called BBL, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> so I did do some stuff like that. And it was, uh, I got really lucky and I did have, I didn't have perfect skin on my wedding day because I've never had perfect skin in 13 years. But I had a very good skin day on my wedding day and that was like a really big relief, which was just like, felt like a gift from the angels uh, cause I've struggled with acne for so long and the confidence has been up and down and up and down. But at the end of the day, again, like I said, if you prepare enough, I was ready for acne. I'm gonna repeat that. I was ready to have acne. I prepared my brain mentally to have acne on my wedding day, to have active pimples so that it wouldn't crush me. It is really hard to have acne. It is really hard. Um, so I put in that kind of like self-love work early in the engagement process to be ready for whatever. I got really lucky. Then we headed to the venue. We were behind, um, behind in the schedule. I, I was 10 minutes behind in my makeup. So the girls went over first to start their makeup over there. Alicia was doing their makeup as well. Um, I stayed at the hotel with my mom, my dad and my sister um, to just finish my makeup in silence, which was really nice. And then it gave me time to think about everything I needed to like leave the building and to pack because there was like a lot to bring over. It's so crazy. Um, but that went really well. We took an Uber. Um, 
I another little rat bride thing or just like a bride thing so you're not a bridezilla or whatever you want to call that I don't know if that's a very nice term it's probably not um but I was very clear with my communication so my mom was asking me like a million questions in the uber and I just was like you know would it be cool if I just had like three minutes to just think through my stuff right now and just like think about things and my mom's like yep absolutely and that's something I did throughout the day is I just like had very clear communications so that I didn't have like an anxiety attack you know what I mean I feel like that's very fair and a very good idea she was super cool with it and uh, it was good it let me like just make sure I had everything did I do everything on my makeup that I wanted to do like it's hard to not lose your head on your wedding day right so I wanted to like stay grounded like put in the work to just stay grounded which I recommend we get to the venue um we some of the, the girls the makeup got behind which was like too bad so this is like some of the stuff that just didn't didn't go super well we could have started at 6 a.m we started at 7 a.m probably would have needed that extra hour definitely would have needed that extra hour we did need that extra hour um I thought I had done the math right but you know what there's just too much going on that things really do slip so the good thing was and this was something I had already decided like when making the schedule and preparing at least I could be ready because my photographer arrived at, arrived at 12 I got to the venue at 12 15 so I was 15 behind again that makeup thing and then at least I was ready so I could get in my dress, do the stuff with my mom, do stuff with my dad, take photos with them while the girls were still getting ready. I did some individual portraits. The girls still weren't ready. Um, so that's when I got like a little panicked. And so then I just went over and I was like, could we actually just make sure Lauren's ready so that I can then do family pictures because Colin was ready. So we did that. So again, just like open communication. No need to panic. Shit's going to go wrong. Again, if you do that mental work and just be ready for the fact that shit's going to go wrong, you're fine. You're fine. You can always rework things, you know, just like have open communication with everybody. Keep it chill. I would have like hated like fights or something on my wedding day. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> I am a rat and I will scurry into the sewer the second tensions get high. I can't deal with high tension. Okay. Um, so it worked really well that everyone like was just open communication. I love that. Talk open communication to me. I love it. So that was awesome. And uh, so we bumped Lauren up in the line and Lauren was able to come take photos. Um, she and I got to do like this like Pinterest one that I had seen these two girls like running together. So we went and did that, which I'm really happy about. I hope it turns out well. I'm excited about it. Um, and then the girls were ready. So we went and did those. Um, but we were about 30 minutes behind in the photo schedule, which is like kind of a shame. So then um, the boys arrived and I was like, it was supposed to be... Um, the boys next but then I was like doing the math on the time and it was turning out that Zach and I weren't gonna get much time for our own photos together which is like too bad but I was like his pictures with his friends in my mind matter more because we had apartment wedding we had some I wanted to make sure he got as much time as I got with my girls I'm a Libra fair is fair like that's where my brain was at so I was like you guys go for your half an hour Zach and I will take 15 to just get the photos we need because my other thinking with that is like you're going to get pictures during the ceremony, uh, during your first dance, during the cake cutting, during dinner, like of just the two of us. So I really wanted him to have some nice photos with his friends. Then Zach and I went out. Um, another sad thing that went wrong is I got cardigans for all the girls and I was obsessed with them and we never took pictures in them. That is a regret. Yeah, because I was really excited about the cardigans. I have a picture, I think, in my cardigan, which is this like crazy cardigan that I was just like so fun. It's like a piece of art kind of cardigan. I love it. Um, and I got the girls like pink ones to kind of match that. We never got a picture in them. And I don't think we ever took pictures with our bouquets, <laughs> except during the ceremony, obviously. But that's fine. But a regret, you know. But again, something's going to go wrong. You can't even regret this shit. It's just like there's going to be one million happy things in this day. And there's going to be like 10 to 15 things that go wrong. So it really doesn't matter, right? Unless you like shit your pants, that would matter, right? But these other things, they happen. And honestly, when it's rolling, I always knew this about myself too. Once it was rolling, I tried telling people that because they were like, what can we do? What can we do? And I was like, honestly, once it's rolling and I'm dealing with my diabetes, I'm dealing with the fact that hundred people are looking at me, dealing with this chaotic day, I'll be good because I'm going to enter like beast mode rat who works on spontaneity, who I love, like when things are going, what I don't enjoy is the anticipation because the anticipation just allows my brain to think of every single thing that can go wrong. But when something's rolling and I get to deal with the issues, I'm quite good at that. I actually enjoy that. I thrive off that sometimes, you would, you may say. So that was all fine for me. And things did, like I said, things went wrong. So Zach and I did our little photos, kind of. <laughs> I 
another regret is we only took pictures in one location because we only had 15 minutes and I'm just sad because it was like such a beautiful building I would have loved pictures elsewhere but again we would have gotten them at the ceremony I got pictures with my girls in the courtyard I got pictures with my family in like an alcove so like at the end of the day the, the building was photographed really well I just would have loved that with Zach so again bit of a regret but that was no one's fault and that was um, the best decision because I really want him to have those pictures with his friends I got the pictures with my friends and he and I have like apartment wedding we have our own photos together and at the end of the day you only really need like a couple good photos of every thing right so and and like I said like you're gonna get so many when you cut cake and stuff so I thought at the end of the day I think that was a good decision it's just too bad we ran out of time so really I regret not starting at 6 a.m <laughs> um then it was time for this ceremony oh yeah an apartment wedding was slay because it was okay that Zach had seen me already so we didn't have to do a big kerfuffle of like avoiding each other it was like really chill which is another reason why I was like excited for part apartment wedding because I'm like the more chill I can make this that's what I want okay like I want to remove all things that make tensions or things difficult so not being able to see each other well that's challenging and setting up this big thing in a quick short amount of time and look at we already ran out of so much time so that 15 minutes would have just been our first look so apartment wedding was like an amazing idea and I highly recommend it it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea but I do think it's a very good idea so then it's time for the ceremony. I thought I'm good. I was really present. I was shaky. I was excited. I ended up putting on the veil. I barely looked in the mirror. I don't know if I will regret that, but it's on. I got to see the pictures. I don't know. It's on there. It's not like it was bad. It's not like it was bad. Um, so then we go to walk down the aisle and um, that's when I all of a sudden had a little bit of a rat moment not rat out loud but rat in my head of like oh, I really don't want to walk past 100 people right now that's what I was feeling I was like this is so private there's just something about it that just feels so private that I just did not want to share with 100 people even though these people are lovely people it's just like this is so private I want it intimate and it 100 people just isn't so when I stepped out I was supposed to walk slow and again here's this graceful thing I was supposed to do I didn't like it I kind of charged down the aisle I don't regret that for a second because I wanted out of there that space between I kept my eyes locked on Zach I got down to him and then I created a bubble and I just didn't even think about the fact that 100 people were looking at me I don't remember any faces from the crowd that was a decision I was like I'm not gonna look out I'm just not gonna look out at these people glad I didn't I locked in on Zach I could see his friends' faces behind him. That was so nice. I knew my girls were behind me. That was so nice. Our officiant was great. My favorite part of the ceremony was actually signing the marriage document because that part felt the most official. Like, it's actually crazy how quickly you get married. So sitting down and signing it with Zach, that was really fun. And I tried to really take that in. I don't know why that stood out. It was like a really great time. And uh, um, we did our kiss. We did practice it, which I'm glad we did practice it. And I thought through all the wanky ways of doing the kiss because, hey, you're kissing in front of not only your relatives, but a hundred people. That's a little, it's a little weird, right? <laughs> it's not my jam, um, but they like it. It's a crowd pleaser. I get it. So I was like, obviously we're going to do that. And you seal your love with a kiss, blah, blah, blah. But we practiced it. And if you're curious, I do think the best way is to do a back bend, not a dip, not a dip. You kiss, you start kissing and then you back bend. And it's so cute. I would say that's the best way to do it, but I could be wrong. Um, then we had to walk past down the aisle again and Zach was thriving. Like he's a social guy. So he was like really excited, really loving it. I didn't like the aisle. I didn't enjoy that part at all. And once again, my feeling was get me the freak down this. And we were supposed to stop in the middle and do a kiss. I don't think we did. I don't even know what we did because I was blacking out. I was like, get me out, get me out of here. And so finally we like get out of there. And then we went up to this like private like where we, the bridal suite, like where we got ready and stuff. Um, when we, where we got changed, essentially, they had like a little room for us. And that's when Zach and I had like 15 minutes alone. Highly recommend that. Highly recommend someone leaving a camera in there or a phone in there for you, because that was like a fluke, but we got like the best video ever, 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 ever in there. Um, just because someone left my own camera on there and I was like, like Zach and I were enjoying things and he's like, okay, should we head back down? And I saw the camera and I was like, let's just document this. And it's the best video I have. And that video alone is why I don't regret not getting a videographer and saving money on that. Uh, videographers, I feel neither here nor there about them. I think it's like a great idea if you have the budget. I do think it's something you can cut because iPhone videos do cut it. Like 
the cameras on our phones are pretty incredible. Like I have an iPhone video of like our dance, my father daughter dance videos of the ceremony. We also like set up tripods. My brother was amazing. He set up like a tripod, filmed our ceremony. It is not professional quality whatsoever, but if I ever want to reflect upon that day, it is certainly good enough, right? So like, that's the way I went with that, but I love video, obviously. So if I was a millionaire, yes, I would have had a videographer, but it wasn't a regret at the end of the day. And having that special little video and some of these little videos of, I don't care that they're like, kind of like grainy or not professional. Like they're just cute and, it, and I'll be able to revisit them. So it works out. Then we went down to the cocktail party. Um, that was okay. I, I'm not a big fan of like compliments. So I didn't love that part. Cause obviously everyone's going to tell you how beautiful you look and how wonderful the dress is. Didn't love that part. Um, that part was, was tricky, like navigating and making sure you talk to a hundred people. And I'm not sure I got to the full hundred. I think I got to like 75. So I feel bad about that. I regret that. Um, but I tried. Um, anyways, then we did our little entrances for the, this really part, not so much my jam. Again, anything in front of a hundred people wasn't so much my jam. Um, but I already knew that about myself and that's why I wanted to elope because I find more comfort and more beauty in intimacy rather than like shared stuff. But that's not to say that shared stuff isn't beautiful in its own way. It's just not my jam, not my cup of tea. And so at dinner, I bubbled again and I just didn't look out at the faces. I didn't look to see if people were enjoying their dinner. I didn't look, I just kept with my people and I kept, I kept saying to everybody how, how lovely it was to see their faces, like looking down the sweetheart table or whatever the heck and seeing like my sister and my brother, uh, my two friends, like that filled me with so much joy. And then looking the other way and seeing Zach and everyone that, you know, got him here that stood beside him, just so much joy, but I couldn't bring myself to look out at the quote unquote audience. So I just bubbled and I really enjoyed my dinner and I really enjoyed talking with my sister and my friends and I managed to tell them how much I loved them, which I'm really, really, really glad I did. What a wonderful opportunity to thank people like so wholeheartedly. And I just, I was genuinely so infatuated with all the people around me at that table. It was lovely. Um, so I just had to bubble on the parts that just didn't fit in with me and it worked very well. Speeches were lovely. Again, not great at taking a compliment, but it was really nice to hear pe what people like, kind of like what their impression of you is. Well, that's kind of cool. So I really enjoyed the speeches. Zach and I did, I think did a really good job with our speech. Like that was really good. And then it was the dances. They um, felt awkward, like walking out there. But then when I got out there, I just did this thing in my head where I was like, bubble. I'm telling you, bubble is the thing. And so I just tuned everyone out. And I was genuinely happiest when I tuned everyone out. That's going to sound really rude because all these people like turned up for you and I am thankful to that and I do like these people very much and it's not that I don't want to share this with them it's just that in the moment I don't really like being in front of a hundred people for an intimate thing okay I just don't um so I just bubbled I had a great conversation with my dad it was super emotional it was so nice I had a great conversation with Zach we were so giddy um I felt really free in that moment. Like I even picked him up. He picked me up. It was really cute. I picked him up. It was just spur of the moment. Like I just feel like I was really present and in it. And I'm really glad that happened. It could have gone horribly wrong. Could have dropped him. Wasn't really thinking. Wasn't thinking it through at all. Okay. Um, I just was feeling the moment and I bubbled. When I watch back on the video, I think it looks so ugly. I think it is so ugly. Our first dances. But that's okay, because I enjoyed them. But visually, they were nothing to write home about. So dancing in front of 100 people when you can't dance, it is only cute because it's emotional. Let me just, I'll just put it that way. I'm sure people were fine watching it, but everyone stayed seated and stayed at their tables. So it was like super awkward. So I don't know if we should have said like, everyone like, come watch more, but it's probably best that they didn't. Because again, I didn't see anyone's face, but Zach or my dad when I was dancing with them. And I kind of loved that. Um, so it worked out, but visually quite ugly. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and then it was uh, cake cutting. That was really fun. We did that privately. I told the photographer, I told Travis, our MC, who did a great job, my sister and husband. I was like, do not announce the cake cutting. I want to bubble on that one too. Thank you very much. And we did. Nobody watched it. It was great. Got to bite our cake. It was really nice. The food was good. That was great. Um, and then it was dancing time and I let loose completely. Again, no problem. Like the second, that's kind of when I was like, and I get to take off my bridal cap and just be someone who's at this great event with all these great people. And I let loose and I danced like a loon 
for the rest of the night, I did not leave the dance floor at all. I danced and 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 it was awesome. And I looked like a loon, like I said, you know, I, I'm not a pretty dancer, but I had a great time. I was screaming, I was jumping. It was so fun. So like, that's when I finally enjoyed the fact that there was a hundred people at my wedding. Um, Cause that was really cool. I love dancing with people. I love dancing at weddings. That was really, really awesome. So great. I, I did enjoy one aspect of a hundred people being there. So like, that was awesome. Um, yeah, any regrets in summary? Um, not enough time, but I got my perfect morning. I wouldn't change a thing aside from the fact that time did slip and uh, rehearsal dinners wouldn't do those. I would probably skip it, honestly, like if you're a rat bride, because it was like just... I was better left in the dark. That's the kind of rat I was. Like, yes, I was always constructing, like analyzing, visualizing how everything would go. But then when you put me in the visual, that's when I actually was able to panic. Whereas when I was in the dark and only in my own comfort of my four walls, conspiring how this was gonna go, I was more comfortable. So I probably wouldn't have done a rehearsal. I would have done the dinner. Again, the dinner was really lovely. That was That part was really nice. So the dinner's nice. The rehearsal part, ooh, that stressed me out. And uh, I maybe regret not doing a hair trial, but again, that's more money. So like I don't, but sure, if I was a millionaire, I think a hair trial would be nice. Um, I ended up loving my hair, but again, on the day, I didn't even like barely look in the mirror. I didn't make one adjust. I did make an adjustment actually, that's a lie. I did find one piece that I asked, can we just tuck this one? Okay, so I did, I did do that, but on the whole, um, I think a hair trial would have been good because if that hadn't turned out well, wow, I would have just had bad hair the whole night. Luckily, Alicia is literally a goddess and she crushed it. So my rats, that was the day. Oh, there's more detail I could go into. Okay, really quickly, I had fake flowers. Didn't regret that because it was like really stress-free because I didn't have to worry about being like really careful with them. They looked good and they were cheaper. And again, you could call me cheap. Yes, but I'm just living within my means and spreading the money into the areas I thought were important, okay? Um, I did not regret wearing Keds. I don't know if you saw that on TikTok. I had a really tough time finding wedding shoes. I didn't feel like buying something that I was never gonna wear again. So I did wear Keds. I was fearful that I was going to look like a try hard or a pick me, but I've got a little salmon of a foot that has to have laces or buckles for a shoe to fit. Like my foot is so narrow, so Keds. Um, I was really comfortable all night. You couldn't tell I was in Keds and any of the pictures like the little diabetes video of the garter on my, like the kids look really just like cute. It's giving 90s runaway bride. I love it. Not that I ever wanted to run away from Zach as a bride. Did I want to run away from the wedding? Yes, but I wanted to elope. I still wanted to marry this man. But anyways, those worked out. Doing my own makeup, no regret. Um, I didn't change into my reception dress. I don't regret. But it's like a neutral. I could have done that and it would have been nice. I just never left the dance floor and that's lovely too. So yeah, my rats, thank you for this ratitude check. Uh, I just brought, walked you through that whole ratitude process. Um, if you're wondering like what's gonna happen with the podcast, it's not a wedding podcast, but I think I will forever talk about weddings because it has been such a significant moment in my life. It has brought up so much shit for me. <laughs> that I will, I will always ask when someone's been married and I will always be deep diving on weddings because I'm fascinated by it. I think it's a circus. I think it's insane, but I also get it. It's a weird, you know, and then mine happened to just bring up trauma. So it was interesting, but uh, yeah, I plan on having guests. I plan on doing solo episodes. I plan on taking you through life as a rat because now that I am aware of the fact that I am a rat and I am living life as a rat, which has its pros and I will ride or die for the rat community till I die because I will always be a rat. But what can I do to still have a really great life instead of always having like living in the shadows like a rat? Like how do I be a rat in the sunshine? That's what we're going to explore here. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was okay. Really excited. Cheers. We'll work on an outro. We'll work on it. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on YouTube. Let's let the rats take over the world.
imagine one day I could like interview other celebrities, others as if I'm one, I'm not. But imagine one day I could interview celebrities and deep dive on their wedding and get us to tell and get them to tell us the ratty details. I'll get it out of them. I would. Anyways, love you so much. Imagine, imagine I end with a rat noise. No, we won't do that. I don't think. Okay, bye.